Gorillas are formidable animals that always seem to fascinate us, not just because of our close evolutionary connection, but also because of their immense power. They are renowned for their muscular bodies, their super strength, and aggressive displays when an intruder enters their territory. But most of the time, gorillas are gentle giants, feeding almost entirely on plant matter and shying away from people. Here we ask the question, why are gorillas so strong? It is said that gorillas can lift many times their body weight with ease, and they are considered nine times stronger than the average man. Some studies found that gorillas were able to lift up 815 kilograms, or 1,800 pounds. This can be compared to just 410 kilograms, or 900 pounds lifted by a man who regularly lifts weights. Their muscles are enormous, but their grip strength and bite force are also incredibly advantageous for them. They can pull down a banana plant easily just to access the fruit and simply snap bamboo shoots with their powerful hands. Gorillas consist of two different species, the eastern and western gorillas living in Rwanda, Uganda, and the Democratic Republic of Congo as well as parts of West Africa. The two species can further be divided into at least four subspecies. Males can weigh over 270 kilograms, almost 600 pounds. On their hind legs, they can stand more than six feet tall. Usually, their physical presence alone is enough to deter any predator or intruder, but their incredible muscle mass also serves as a powerful defense against outsiders. Males fight for dominance amongst their kind for mating rights with females. The physical characteristics of gorillas, along with their behavior, make them incredibly strong and potentially dangerous. But why is this? What makes them so strong in comparison to us and other apes? It is a mixture of genetics and physical characteristics that allows them to bulk up easily and maintain their strength on an almost entirely vegetarian diet. Their arms are longer than their legs, which gives them exceptional leverage, enabling them to carry heavy items. Walking predominantly on all fours means that their limbs take most of their weight and so their muscles are well developed to support that weight. Other primates that are mostly arboreal or tree-dwelling do not need to support their weight to the same extent. The long arms of the gorillas have exceptional mobility at the shoulder joints. This allows for vertical climbing, reaching in all directions for food, and quadrupedal locomotion. Their heavily muscled legs are equipped for rapid propulsion and weight-bearing activities. Despite their size and weight, gorillas are surprisingly fast. It is said that they can run up to 25 miles per hour and have explosive movement when necessary. The males have significantly more deltoid and chest muscle than females and greater muscle mass on their backs as well. This gives the notorious silverbacks, who are the leaders of each family, their characteristic look. Gorillas aren't the only sexually dimorphic species of the great apes. Male orangutans are significantly larger than their female counterparts but their muscle distribution differs from that of gorillas. This is where natural and evolved behavior and environmental factors play a role in the body composition of different species. Gorillas and orangutans have different lifestyles. Whilst orangutans prefer to swing and climb in the trees, gorillas spend a much greater amount of time on the forest floor. Walking on all fours, they require more muscle in their legs in order to do this. Gorillas naturally have less fat tissue than orangutans and much lighter forelimbs than hind limbs, giving them power. Also playing a role in the physical build of different species and subspecies is the altitude at which they live. Mountain gorillas have larger thoraxes than lowland gorillas, which allows them substantially greater lung volumes. This enables them to cope with the high altitude and lower concentrations of oxygen. Their muscles are also more efficient in coping with the lower levels of oxygen. Although environmental and behavioral factors contribute to the morphology of gorillas, their ability to grow exceptional muscle mass is largely down to their genetics. They are the most muscular of the apes. Their muscles are denser than ours, and the muscle fibers themselves are more efficient. This allows their muscles to grow quicker and bigger. However, it's not just a muscle that makes the gorillas so strong. Their skeletons are slightly different from a human which allows them a greater range of movement in their limbs and therefore the ability to grow more muscle to handle heavier loads. Genetic variation amongst humans is also a significant contributing factor to the body types we all have. 
Some people are much more capable of building muscle mass than others. Even with significant weight training and the most effective diet, some people just can't build muscle as well as others. The same is true for other great apes. So, what about the food gorillas eat? We all know that protein builds muscle. For humans, animal protein in the form of lean meat is often considered the best and most natural way to increase protein intake. Of course, there are plant-based sources of protein as well, but gorillas largely eat leaves which are not high in protein. So, how do they build muscle on a relatively low-protein diet? Although they are technically omnivores, gorillas are mostly vegetarian and can even be considered folivores as they largely eat foliage. However, they will also consume small animals, including ants and termites. Their low consumption of animal protein means that they get the majority of the nutrition they need for their powerful bodies from plant matter. They consume young branches, leaves, fruits, seeds, buds, roots, stems, bark, and the pith of wood. So, if animal protein makes up only around 2-3% to of their diet, how can gorillas pack on the pound so easily? Well, it's not as much about what they eat and more about how they eat. Unlike humans, gorillas can digest cellulose, which is the main component of plant material. No mammals produce cellulase. Instead, those that feed mostly on plant matter, namely herbivores, rely on bacteria and other microorganisms to produce the cellulase for them. These microbes live in the animal's guts and break down cellulose to feed and grow themselves. The host animal benefits from this by absorbing some of the breakdown products as well as absorbing the microbes themselves. The reason gorillas can digest such large volumes of plant matter, up to 30 kilograms or 66 pounds each day, is that they have an enlarged colon. This is where gorillas have millions of microbes, in such the same way as a cow or a sheep. The gorilla can absorb the protein found within the bacteria and use that as protein for their own growth. This is called microbial protein, and it is the perfect example of a symbiotic relationship. So, although gorillas aren't getting their dietary protein from the plants they eat, they are able to ingest protein from the millions of microbes in their intestines. Despite being such a powerful animal, gorillas are in sharp decline, and sadly their species is threatened with extinction. All four subspecies of gorillas are considered endangered or critically endangered. There are thought to be just over 1,000 mountain gorillas left in the wild, and only 250 to 300 cross-river gorillas left. They are at real risk of going extinct. Threats to their survival include habitat loss from logging and deforestation to make way for human settlement, plantations, and mines. Many are surprisingly still poached. Adults are killed so that babies can be sold in the illegal pet trade, and others are killed for their meat. Furthermore, because gorillas share up to 95% of their DNA with us, they are susceptible to human diseases. Ebola has wiped out one-third of the world's gorillas, and they often fall victim to the likes of malaria and HIV. With such a low reproductive rate, with a female giving birth to a single baby once every four to six years, it would take more than 75 years for gorillas to recover from their current endangered status, even with all threats removed. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.